America. My name is Ahmed Yosef from Pong. I come to you live every Monday and Thursday. Monday I do a show that is um, more relationships focused. Thursday I try to do a more politics show. This time I'm going to try to meet in the middle and just tell you why you should just be very wary of anything that's immediately good. Nothing good in your life, nothing good in life or good in general comes immediately or seems good immediately. It should be mediated by a thought of like, does this make this... Does this make me free? Is this important in this other way? If it feels good immediately, don't do it. If it promises, if it immediately makes sense, step back. And if you teach your kids this, you'll save yourself a lot of heartache, right? And if you screw up and teach them that they should immediately go with their gut or just um, do what they want to because they want to immediately... That is, you're just setting yourself up for, because that's a hard lesson to unlearn. You're just setting yourself up for um, all sorts of really degradation and, and hard moments as a parent. They should learn immediately first that to distrust their immediate anything, their immediate feeling, especially their immediate feelings. They should look back. They should ask yourself, is this good? They should mediate their initial wants by a, uh, you know, understanding of what's good, <laughs> all right? And it's not just, just because you immediately want it doesn't mean it's bad. It's your immediate wants are irrelevant. They have not yet shown themselves to be relevant. Now, once you mediate it through a concept of what's good and right, and, you know, some people do this through the Bible, some people do this through philosophy, some people do this through whatever, but it's important to teach them the process and teach yourself the process and teach anyone you're with the process of mediating their initial wants and desires because their initial wants and desires are bad. Now, this is a countercultural understanding of justice and like goodness in the world because commercial society wants to validate your immediate desires because that's an easy way for them to sell you stuff. <laughs> so commercial society is telling you that your immediate whatever is validated because it's your immediate choice. And I'm saying that no, your immediate choice is invalid until whatever you're choosing among has been itself mediated by uh, your understanding of you know freedom or goodness or anything else, right? So whether you immediately want to have pick this poison over that poison doesn't matter because you haven't thought about whether you should be picking poison at all. Right? Even with my own kids. With my own kids, I never ask them what they immediately want. I sometimes do ask them, of these things you should do for this reason, which one do you want to do? So it's already been mediated by the things they should do. <laughs> right? And that is and the reason why they should do these things. Of these vegetables, which ones do you want? It's never just what do you want like immediately that any wants that happen to be there. Um, and, and I hope, and I, the goal is to tr also train them to have a habit of mediating their wants by what's good, right? Now, like I said, this is countercultural and a lot of influences in your life or in their lives are going to tell them to, that they should immediately enjoy whatever they're going to do. And I was just actually talking to my kids today when we were out in soccer practice. I actually said that, like, no, you act right first. The motivation comes later. The action comes first. Motivation comes later. If you just do what you're motivated to do and expect that to lead to right action, you'll end up doing the wrong thing. Act right first. Be motivated to act right later. Um, and, you know... If you do this, kind, the thing is, the other way is more popular because it's a lazier variety. It's, it's a lazier variety of parenting when you could just say that, well, they choose to, you know, sit around and play video games. No, like, like that, they even have that as an option as a failure in your parenting. Like you don't understand. You have to mediate all of their options until you teach them to mediate all of their options. And then they can choose among the options that have been already mediated. If you just have them choose between what happens to be lying around, commercial society puts a lot of things out there that are lying around for them to choose from. And if you call that freedom, that's, that's a, uh, they're picking, it's a form of picking poison. 
not choosing themselves, not freedom and truth, which means that the object itself has been mediated through a conception of freedom, not just the subject who's choosing among objects. So people have to choose, and then people have to choose between options which have themselves been mediated. If the options are just there immediately, that's someone else determining your nature. That's whoever made the product that, uh, that you're choosing from determines what you end up like being and choosing um, because they determine all the options you choose. They haven't been mediated between, be, they haven't been mediated by your understanding of what makes you free. But, so, um, you, know, you know, lazy parenting, lazy, lazy relationship, lazy being just does what it immediately wants and then calls that freedom because they don't want to go through the effort or the turmoil or the degradation of actually mediating all of their um, options and understanding that one, they might not be free. You might just be picking poison. And two, um, it's, it's just easier that you don't have to be particularly wise to just tell kids to uh, do what they want. And then you get to blame them when doing what they want actually just gives them bad habits. So you make this awful kid and then you end up blaming the kid for being awful. But all you've done, but the only thing you've done and you've done too much by doing this is teach them to give authority to their immediate desires. Right? I see this all of the time. Parents try to off outsource the responsibility of parenting onto the children by having the child pick between unmediated or immediate desires and then saying, well, they pick this. Like, like no, no. <laughs> I think that's, you're, you're just bad at, you're, you're bad at it. You're bad at, you're bad at parenting. Now, you know, hardcore conservative religious people get around this because everything has already been mediated by the religious culture. So nobody, so nobody asks like an Orthodox Jew or whatever, like, what do you want? No, Deuteronomy says like, these are the things you can have <laughs> to eat, right? So everything, all decisions have already been mediated by the book, um, by numbers or whatever, right? So all, when all decisions have already been mediated, you're used to your wants having to gone through, having gone through a human and a uh, both divine and artificial, because it was written down by people, uh, mediation. You're used to that's just what it is to want something, is to have it be mediated by what's good, either in the eyes of God or in the eyes of like reason or whatever. But it's been media. It's just not an initial want. It's just not an immediate want. So the battle against immediacy and teaching your kids against immediacy is like the most important battle. You win that, all the subsequent battles become a lot easier because they're not as entitled to be able to do what they immediately want to do. They know that what, they, what it is to be them is to have their aspirations to have been mediated by something other than like their, what their immediate wants, is, wants are. And then they can choose among these mediated options. Um, by the way, you know, if you have never heard this before and you're with someone, you need to watch this part, this, this, um, video with your partner. And if your partner doesn't agree, you need to get a new partner. I'm saving you so much because you're not going to be able to talk someone who's already pot committed into like the liberalism of you know, people should do what they want into not screwing up your kids. They're going to they're screw up your kids. So only watch this video and have this video be the test for whether you should stick it out with the person you're with. If they have no idea what I'm talking about or if it just doesn't make sense, you are not going to want to raise kids with that person. Because the kids will be, they'll make screwed up kids and then blame the kids for screwing up. But, all, but what they've done is addicted the kid to immediacy um, and then are going to blame the kid for being addicted to immediacy. Right? You're going to want someone who, from the beginning, understands that the way to bring kids into the world is to have them understand that their wants are only relevant after they've been mediated through a conception of what's good and what's right. Anybody who gives their, their any person, and then once they're addicted to the alternative, you're dealing with a crack baby. You're always, you're always working at a deficit. You're, all, you're, you're already dealing with someone who's addicted to the wrong stuff and you're going to always be paying um, um, uh, dividends. So I'm just telling you now, 
If, by the way, if you appreciate what I'm doing, and I think you should, especially if you've never heard anything like this before, you should go to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in 515 or... Um, uh, five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month. Now, someone mentioned the marshmallow test. All right, so that's tricky because that test, kids, people, they say people from poorer classes fail it. Now, well, people from poor, poorer classes live in more unstable environments, so that marshmallow is not always there. They're filled with lies. Everyone's lying to them about everything in their life all the time. Um, like the society is unstable and when there's an unstable society you get what you can when it's in front of your face because it's not stable enough to actually be there if you turn your uh, if you turn your attention away right so um so uh there are like there's stability constraints to something like the marshmallow test that that need to be taken seriously that need to be taken seriously. It, it, a good example is I, I um, went to college. One of my uh, one of my friends had a bunch of kids in their family. Had a bunch of kids in their family, and when they had a bunch of kids in their family, everyone gets sit down for a family meal, and um, the person always filled up their plate. All the kids filled up the plate as the food went around, like they filled it up. Because the idea is that when the dish goes around, it's not going to go around twice. <laughs> it's, like, it's not like Ben Wiss or, or um, what do, why people don't pay for The hearts or spades where like, you know, the suit goes around. You can expect the suit to go around twice. No, the, 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 uh, the, the dish only went around once. So if you missed it, if you didn't fill out your plate then, you just weren't going to eat that dish. Right? So that's not a failure of discipline. That's just understanding the constraints of your situation to know that you can't just wait for the dish to come around twice. So that explains like the marshmallow test with a little bit more, with a little bit more, um, I think, perspicacity that people from unstable environments can't trust that... Um, People from unstable environments can't trust that that long-range plans will actually sustain and manifestly don't. So they're actually just being good empiricists and thinking that the, the long-range plan is not going to work out the way it is, it is um, pitched to them and that they should just get what they can uh, immediately. But, so there's, there's that. All right, so um, once again, your first goal as a parent is to teach your kids to mediate their immediate desires through some conception of the good, some conception of the right, and that their immediate desires don't have any authority unless they've already been, and once they've been mediated, <laughs> like um, they're not immediate anymore, so they, then they can choose among these mediated desires. If you screw that up, you'll be on the back foot for the rest of, of, of their adolescence. And on to the rest of the year. Like, um, because once people have been addicted to the idea that they should just go with their gut or uh, do what they want, or, or they conflate freedom with choosing among immediately given options, even if those options are given to you by external forces that do not have your best interests in mind, um, then like, you're, you're working against someone who's already an addict. Like, like it's, it's not your goose isn't cooked, but there's a lot of reworking to do. And I do think you should, work, you should watch this video with your significant other. I also think you should give me $5, 15 or $50 a month so I can keep producing this quality of content. But um, you should watch this video with your significant other or even your child and then just talk about this. Talk about it. Um, because it'll, um, it'll preclude a lot of problems that might be in your future. And if they don't understand anything I'm saying or what I'm saying doesn't make any sense at all to them, then like maybe you need to pick a different person. All right. I got to go. Take care. And I will see you next week. Peace.